Get me that signal. We need more power. All right, we'll do a quick combat example. I advanced my first turn move uh, another turn and was able to come up with this configuration. Yes, I cheated a little bit just so I could get it, so don't try to duplicate it. But here's where the situation right at this moment. We've got an army standing right here outside of the Ruins of Dale. We've got another shadow army right here outside of the Ruins of Dale. There's five figures here, four here. In the Ruins of Dale itself, we've got four lake men, We've got Gandalf, who is charged up and ready to blast. And we've got little Bilbo. Bilbo got to come into the game. Hi, everybody. I'm Bilbo. And he's got a special power that we should be able to see during this combat. So the shadow player is just moved in there, and he is initiating what is called a combined attack, which is a very powerful type of attack that... Um, anybody can use, but it's much easier for the shadow to bring it into play than it is for the free people. Combined attack. Attack using all of your armies adjacent to the attacked region. There's one major advantage, aside from being able to switch between two armies. When you are going to battle, you own, there's these cards that you get. These attack cards. And you only get to use the ones for the characters that are involved in the battle in your army. So, let's say I declare, okay, uh, first thing I have to think about is who's going to have superiority attacking, uh, attacking wise. These are all lake men. So let's look at the lake men card, because that is what, that's the regroup, everybody gets the regroup. Lake men. All right. You notice here they have an attack strength of one, and this is their preferred territory, and this is their special skill. Okay. Their preferred ter territory is ruins, which is what they're in. So they would get there's four of them. They would get one, two, three, four points towards uh, territorial superiority, or terrain superiority, whatever it's called. So they get four points. So I've got to be thinking about this beforehand, because in my one army, I've got four wards. Their superiority is in the plains. Are they on the plains? Yes, they are. So they would also get four. Uh, the little orky guys, theirs are swamp, so they wouldn't get it. So it would be four to four. That would mean neither one of us would have the advantage. If there is a point where somebody does have an advantage, then that player gets to draw an extra event card. And put and these can come because they've all, each got a special thing that can happen in battle. So you want to have that card because it gives you an extra option. So they'd have four there, and on the other side, now these guys automatically get superiority. Or these great orbs, no matter what territory they're in. And so that would be one point there. Uh, the wards, th all right, these are hills, so the wards wouldn't get any, and the orc wouldn't get any either. So in this case, the free peoples would be having the advantage, and they'd get to draw that card. So instead, the shadows, the smart shadow player is saying, all right, I'm attacking with this, these guys first. You only figure it out in the first turn of the battle. You determine who's got uh, the superiority for the terrain. Next thing that happens is, all right, you've got wards and one little orc. So I get to put, take into my hand, I get to take my wards card, my orcs card, no goblins, my regroup card. I do have a shadow bats out there in this territory. They don't have to be in a specific region. They can just be in that territory. So I get to take the vampire-like card into my hand. The other ones I'm not going to get to use. Plus, I get to use any event cards that I have. So as the shadow player, these this is my hand to choose from. And this will allow me to use different maneuvers. 
as the free peoples, well, the free people only have lake men. Right? So they only get that card plus the regroup card. Everybody gets that and whatever event cards they have. So they have these two event cards. The next thing that we have to determine is each player picks one of their cards that they're going to use for this turn. So the lake men, let's see what we got. Your opponent rolls two less dice in his combat roll to a minimum of one. Do I want to use that yet? I don't know. Add one to all dice in your combat roll. Okay, that's what they're going to do. They're the strongest right now that want to do the most damage right now. So, that's the, their card that they're going to play. And then we're going to go, and what are these guys going to do? They are going to use this Warg's ability. All right, so their card comes out too. They're flipped upside down, and then both players reveal theirs at the same time. And now they know how these cards are going to affect the battle. Battle uh, fighting is simultaneous. So whatever happens, just happens. Uh, each of these lake men has an attack strength of one. So there's one, two, three, four of them. That means I get, they get four dice to roll. They need a five or a six. Different things can affect that, like if you're attacking across a Ford, then the, during the first round, the attacker has to roll sixes. If you're attacking across a, uh, up a slope, then the attacker would have to roll a six, but it's only on the very first turn. For fortifications, you always have to roll a six until that fortification is destroyed, and that's by doing three points of damage if it says three. Or up there at front gate, it's six points of damage in order to break down those fortifications, and then it goes back to a normal combat. So the free people's roll, two fives, a four and a two. So that's two hits. Now he has one leadership token, plus he's got Gandalf, who has a leadership of one. And Bilbo has a leadership of zero. That means that they get to re-roll two dice. A three and a six. All right, it gets plus one to all of them, but it needs at least a five. So three hits. You get all these little damage tokens. You take three of those and put them with the shadow army that attacked. Now it's the shadow's turn. Now, of course, again, combat is simultaneous. Now, since we're using the wargs card, the wargs get to use a special die, the black die, to see if they're going to be able to get to use their ability during this turn. So you get one black die for each physical warg that you have in the attacking army. So we have one, two, three, four. If any of these dice hit, then this ability that the wargs have will take effect. And what it says is, Rear guard attack. At the end of the round, your opponent is forced to apply damage until a maximum of one damage token is left. I'll tell you about applying damage as soon as we get there. These damage tokens, basically what it means is that until there's enough damage to be uh, greater than the number of figures that you have, then they just kind of gather here on the side. But once you've got more damage than you have figures, you have to take off one figure will take off two damage tokens. So so that's four dice, and then they get one white die for the little orc guy right there. So they're going to get to roll five dice. Okay, they got one hit, and that's it. Plus they get one re-roll for a leadership token. So, okay, two hits. There we go. That means they take two, and they place it on the Free People's Army. Now, again, the black die was a hit, so that means the ward special ability will take effect. So, you must apply damage until you have a maximum of one damage token left. Well, there's two right now. So that means i got to get rid of one of these guys. He's dead. He comes off, and that will take off these two damage tokens. 
But as you can see, if I'm going to go another round, then now they're only going to get to roll three dice. And that's exactly what they're going to do. We're going to go another round. Now here's where the beauty part of combined attacks help. I also have wards in the other army. Well, I'm going to attack from this other army for this round. I announced that. I get to take this ward card and put it back in my hand. So now I will have... And I will also add the Great Orc card, because I got one of those there. And those guys can do some damage. They add, can add two uh, points of damage unless you discard a leadership token or one of your characters. And discard means eliminate, kill them. If, they, if they are, that army gets wiped out, both these guys are dead. That's not good. You don't want Gandalf to... I've had Gandalf get killed in the first turn. So... Combat starts again. Each player is going to pick a card that they're going to use. I can't reuse the Lake Men card, so I have to pick one. Of, oh, I didn't use the Lake Men card, did I? How am I going to choose that this time? Okay, so they're going to choose a Lake Men card. It's secret. Shh, don't tell the Shadow Player. The Shadow Player gets to choose from all these. Oh, this would be nasty to do. Your opponent's target number is six. Oh. All right, that's what they're going to do. So, here we go. We have three dice that the free people can roll. And that's what they're going to do. But they do get to add one to each one. But their target number is six. So only... Oh, no. That's a five, too. No, I'll give it to them. So that counts as a six, and they get to re-roll for leadership. These two dice... No. So they get one hit on these guys. Now, the Great Orc is going to attack strength of two. That means he gets two dice. So two, three, four, five dice. They're all going to be white, though, because we're not using anybody's special ability. We're using this event card. So a five or a six is what the Shadow's trying to get. We've got one, two hits. They've got one leadership token, so they get to roll one more. And they screwed that up. So now we take two damage and put it in that army. But hey, guess what? I can use Bilbo's special ability now. Bilbo's special ability allows me to take one of these ring tokens off of his character card, discard it, Bilbo goes swoosh, and it disappears. He's gone. Actually, he went back onto his card. And he takes with him two damage tokens. Now we're just left here with good old Gandalf and these three archers. But of course, now this card, these cards get discarded. Once they're used once, they're gone. Discarded. We switch to the next round of fighting. The attackers could call it off at any time if they want, or the defenders could either route or do a regroup, which allows them to withdraw uh, successfully. And they're really debating on doing that already. Because yeah, I don't really want Gandalf to die. He never even got to shoot his super blast. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play regroup for them. They still have to survive this round. We're switching to these guys to attacking again. And we're going to go ahead and play that Wargs ability again, because it's such a nice ability. If they do enough damage, they could really mess them up. So they both secretly pick their cards, they flip them up. Alright, now we've got this roll for the free peoples. They only get three dice this time, because there's only three left. And they're white dice, because they're not using a special ability. Here we go. We got a five, that's one hit. We still have two leadership. So they get to re-roll these two. A six. So they get two hits. We'll put that over here on these guys. Now they have a total of five tokens here. If they get any more, they're going to start losing figures. But right now it's five to five, so they're okay. Now it's their turn to attack. There are four wargs, so they're, since they're using the warg ability, we're going to have four black dice and... One white die for the little, little orky guy. 
Okay, they rolled two hits. They have one leadership token, so they get to make one reroll. And they pulled off three hits. That means they're going to take three damage tokens, put them over here. Now remember, the warg special ability. You must apply damage until a minimum of one damage token is, a maximum of one damage token is left. Normally, since it's three and three, we wouldn't have to worry about it. They're okay. They could just withdraw. But since we're using the warg's ability and it was successful on one of the black dice, that ability happens. That means I have to remove one of these lakemen. He's dead. And I get to take off two tokens. Now there's a maximum of one damage here. And if they want, right now they can choose to leave uh, by retreating. And so that is what they're going to actually do. They're going to retreat over here towards the lower slopes, taking their leadership and damage with them. And now the attacking army gets to move into the ruins of Dale taking their damage with them as well, and their leadership token. Once in there, the shadow gets to take one of their control tokens and place it over that, showing that the shadow now controls the ruins of Dale. That gets them two victory points, and if they manage to bring Bold into the game right now, he would show up with his three bodyguards rather than just one bodyguard, which is what they really want to do. So as you can see right now, it's not looking too great for the free peoples, but hey, I'm telling you, they can come back from this. This isn't the end of the world for them. It's a regroup over here and then do a counterattack. Gandalf's waiting to blow their heads off with this special uh, magic thing. It can go either way. You, you just don't know. It's a matter of dice rolling and strategy. And so there is a combat, how combat would work, uh, at least one particular battle, in the Battle of the Five Armies. You need that signal. We need more power.